This is a long plane review of Darkman on the Amstrad CPC. Yep, this is a movie license from Ocean Software, released in 1991, a year after the movie came out, and it's a perfect film to base a game on. Ocean always had a good knack of picking up the right licenses, like Robocop and uh, Batman Terminator 2, etc. Uh, Shane the movie, though, wasn't a worldwide smash, although it was relatively successful, and Ocean pumped out games across all the popular formats. And it follows the plot of the movie quite well, starting off halfway through the film at the Chinatown part, although some minor things are not in the right order, and there's some liberties taken here and there to make a better game, perhaps. Um, it's one of my favourite films, uh, especially because I'm a fan of director Sam Raimi, he of Evil Dead army of darkness fame etc and if you're not familiar with the movie well the story revolves around scientist Peyton Westlake who's developing a synthetic liquid skin for burn victims however the skin only lasts for a short amount of time in sunlight before it dissolves and then his lab gets blown up by the evil Durant and his villains before he can perfect the skin. This leaves Peyton horribly disfigured and, and unable to feel any pain and gains extra strength. So he becomes the Dark Man, seeking revenge against Durant and his boss, Strack, who's trying to uh, build a new city or something. Um, and then he uses the liquid skin to disguise himself and confuse and defeat all the uh, evil bad guys. During all this, his girlfriend, Julie, gets kidnapped by Strack, so now he has to save her too. Anyways, on with the game. This... Um, was handled not in-house by Ocean, but by Twilight, who also did WWF WrestleMania and plotting for Ocean, and did a few high-quality budget games for high-tech as well, like Quick Draw McGraw, Yogi Bear, Atom Ant, and more. And it was around about this time, 1991, that Ocean were losing interest in the 8-bit computers. Uh, the GX4000 had been out uh, for a while and proved a failure. There's the coders, graphics and sonics there so the coders um dave box and jason mcgann um as far as i can find they only did this game and plotting and no others graphics by noel hines again i can't find him listed for any other games on the amstrad and the music which you can hear on the title screen here by the always excellent jonathan dunn he who did robocop the untouchables burning rubber wc Le Mans, operation wolf dragon and more although to be fair it's not his best score it's not bad it's pretty good but not his best by a long shot so let's get this loaded up. Level 1, Darkman, seeking revenge on those who disfigured him, sets out to procure the ill-gotten gains of Durant to further his plans. So this is um, a Chinatown level, which occurs about halfway through the movie. Actually, Darkman in the movie is already disguised as Robert G. Durant, the criminal, uh, head of the criminal gang that Strack controls. Strack is the guy who is trying to build a new... loads of buildings in part of a city, and uh, Darkman gets in his way because of his uh, girlfriend. Oh, I vaguely remember the movie. It's one of my favourite movies. But yeah, Darkman is already disguised in the movie here. But anyway, the game takes a few liberties. And here we are in a kind of a scrolling beat em up section. Um, it's pretty limited and linear because you can't move up and down, just move left and right. And you've only got punches and kicks. So it's about timing them and getting the distance right and avoiding attacks. 
this level isn't too hard if you're patient and uh, remember to duck and move away from attacks. Using the kick is probably the most uh, effective way. Punches take a lot more to take down the bad guys. And we've got dogs chasing us here as well. Interesting. Don't remember dogs in the movie. So yeah, a few liberties have been taken here, and if you once you've cleared the screen of all bad guys, if you spend stay around too long, some Death Stars and Shuriken start flying at you. Yeah, it's a pretty standard beat em up fare on this level, but things do change up into sort of beat em up platforming um styles. And also we have sort of a chase them up on the rooftop with a helicopter trying to blow you up, which is actually pretty cool. Um, there's also the scene when you're hanging from the rope from a helicopter, dangling in between the traffic, the busy traffic, trying to survive. Um, that's in the game as well. So the levels do vary and it's well worth watching through this long play, I assure you. Um, there's quite a neat little ending as well to the game. And now we have ninjas appear. Uh, okay, we are in Chinatown, but this is really taking liberties of the movie. <laughs> but I have to say the graphics are really nice and the pre presentation is pretty good actually. Uh, controls are pretty responsive, um, although they do become a, a problem later on in the game, which we will talk about when we come across it. <clears throat> sound effects are okay. The very, very similar sound effects to WWF WrestleMania. Which, of course, was programmed by Twilight and the same programmers. Oh, here's the boss at the end of this level. That's the package we're trying to steal, which is a suitcase full of money. Although, Darkman actually steals that before heading to Chinatown in the movie. But anyway, enough about the movie comparison. That is level one done. Now we come to a photo section. We get a subject we need to photograph. Once fo uh, Darkman has photographed the uh, subject matter, uh, he, he plugs that photo into his computer which produces a mask for him. So it's not necessary to uh, complete this level, it just makes your life easier on the next level. So you've got to find the subject, for, uh, photo him, and then if you get, fr I think it's three decent photos, you get the mask. <laughs> mask complete. So yeah, there's about nine parts to the game, three of which are those so, sort of photography sub-levels. <clears throat> Dartman is discovered before his planet half grown. His fiancée Julie has been seized by Strack. So this is level two. Um, I believe this is in Dartman's uh, lab. Which is kind of a disused factory he takes over. Now with the mask, uh, bad guys won't attack you. Uh, but you only have the mask for a short amount of time, which is that timer ticking down there. One minute, nine, eight, seven seconds, etc. Uh, Dartman's lab's pretty dangerous. There's lots of things shooting at him, which is not in the movie, of course. Um, so really, at the start of this level, if you get the mask, just move as quickly as you can. It follows a pretty uh, linear route as well, which is handy. There's quite a, an evil bubble machine there. <laughs> oh, there's a health pickup below you, but don't jump down there, because then you have to go back through all, all, all the way you've just been. So probably ignore that unless you've really screwed up and want to try again. But I have to say though guys, um, really nice smooth scrolling on an Amstrad. Um, oh the mask has just run out there, so now bad guys will attack you. Nice smooth scrolling, not the biggest screen in the world, um, but wow, it moves horizontally and vertically really smoothly. Uh, at a pretty decent frame rate, uh, what, probably 25 frames per second I'm guessing, maybe as low as 16, but 
Oh, this is a quite an awkward jump. Actually, no, that wasn't. That one was all right. It's a bit later on. There's a very awkward sort of leap of faith, um, and awkward to land on a platform. We'll see in a bit. Um, yeah, but yeah, very smooth. Um, nice character animations as well. Uh, lovely colourful graphics, decent sound effects, but it could really do with music uh, in game. There's nice music and jingles in between levels. But um, without music in game, it sort of makes it feel a little bit hollow. This is a bit of an awkward thing because you've got to defeat this guy here, but you've got this that gun shooting at you. This strange bouncing ball thing. Okay, now uh, the combat in this game is a bit of a letdown. You've only got punches and kicks. And what you need to do is use your kicks and then move away as quickly as possible before they retaliate. And as you, as you can see there, I kicked, moved away, kicked, moved away again, like so. The problem is, oh, there, here's a bit of a leap of faith jump. And quite hard to get right. Sometimes it might be best just to fall off the platform rather than jump. But at least you can direct yourself when you're jumping, which is quite good. So you can change direction while jumping, which is a good thing. A lot of uh, some games don't allow you to change the direction of your jump, which is a bit annoying. Now, um, yeah, there's a little problem there. Uh, so I ended up moving down the ladder a little bit. To do the uh, kick, you have to do fire and down at the same time, which is pretty awkward. Pressing fire without a direction does a punch. Now the controls are fairly responsive, but it does get confused sometimes. So when we're coming up to, we're gonna have to knock down these two bad guys here. Fire and down to kick and then move away. But make sure you release the down key as quickly, or down arrow, or down on your joystick as quickly as possible after doing the jump. Otherwise, Dark Man will get confused and start ducking, which will leave you in a world of trouble, um, because then you'll, you'll uh, end up getting hit, and then kind of get stuck with the bad guy continuously attacking you, and be difficult to do your jump kick attack. So, yeah, there, there. That's what happened there. I ended up ducking by accident. I didn't want to duck, so I ended up having to punch him. And if you wanted to punch a bad guy to death or stun him, it takes double the amount of uh, kicks. So punching is to be avoided where possible. All right, we reached the end of this le of the level, and this guy takes quite a few hits to knock down. So just use the technique of like jump kick, moving away. If you end up too close to him where he doesn't sort of attack you, then uh, use a punch and get your distance. Cool, so that's the end of that level. Dotman sees that his place, this place can no longer be his home. He must leap across the rooftops to his lab to destroy it before it is discovered. And this is the uh, heli uh, first helicopter section. But uh, yeah, running chase across the rooftops. Just got to get to the end as quickly as possible before the time runs out or you fall down or get hit by the explosions. And the explosions look really nice. Nice colours and animation there. And this moves at a nice speed, um, nice and smooth. You can see Darkman's animation there a lot better actually against the blue sky backdrop. Um, Quite a decent animation on him, actually. Uh, quite a nice sprite. Some may argue the the sprite on the specy version looks a bit more like Dark Man. I don't know. Still looks good. Yeah, this is a this is quite a fun section there. Quite easy if you take your time. So yeah, part five, and it's another photo set sub level. Yes, uh, we arrive at the warehouse, there is time for one more disguise. Um, I think this is the, supposed to be the sort of Hispanic guy, one of the bad guys in the movie. Um, I do warn you, uh, yeah I should warn you that, like actually, when you, <laughs> the, 
The uh, character you see actually when you take the photos looks a little bit different to the character you're presented with before you start the level, so that might be a little bit confusing. But yeah, I think we've got the kind of disguise of this Hispanic guy uh, in the movie, uh, one of the bad guys. Alright, okay, yeah, level four. Descending to his lab, Darkman must open the gas cylinders, set the bird rocking over the lighter and escape back to the rooftop. Bird rocking over the lighter, you may ask if you've never seen the movie. Well, it's one of those rocking birds that moves up and down, up and down, up and down as a timer. Um, I think it's very rarely seen now these days, so that might be a little bit confusing. Uh, watch the trailer again if you don't know what I mean. But the uh, rocking bird gets lower and lower and lower. And the rocking bird is set over a lighter. And when the lighter ignites, of course, everything blows up because the gas cylinders have been released. So Dartman's got to get to the bottom left of his lab there, turn on the gas cylinders and set the rocking bird going over a lighter, which automatically happens for you. Now, on this level, um, we're disguised, um, but use the opportunity to knock down the bad guys who won't attack you back because they are dumb and stupid especially these two here which will prove a real trouble when you're trying to escape the lab because a countdown starts and it's a very very tight time limit so use this opportunity on the way down to knock down and stun as many of the bad guys as possible to leave you with a much clearer route uh, to escape with under the tight time limit there are things you can do, like waiting for them to move uh, when you come up from a ladder to get onto the next ladder without them, uh, without having to engage in combat with them. But I'm taking the time to knock them down here because there is a health pickup. Um, actually, I think there's two of them uh, in this level, further down. So it's well worth expending a little bit of energy and effort to give yourself a clearer path on the way back up to the rooftop to escape. Nice use of colours here, I like the purple background there. Yeah, having a bit of a trouble with him there. <laughs> but yeah, you might get a little bit lost on this level maybe. Um, there is a there is a specific route to take, and I suppose knowing the best route is quite essential to escape before the time limit runs out. So follow my route, or I'm sure you can find a map of the game on the internet. In fact, I had a quick look at the uh, map hosted on the World of Spectrum website, because the Specky version is pretty similar to the Amstrad. In fact, all of them are actually, the 8 bits. There's a health pick up there. Now across here, you don't need to get to this, there's some uh, rings to collect, which gives you basically bonus score. And I thought I'd do it, because it's a long play. And you can just drop all the way down here, and then go to the left. Uh, I was getting a little bit confused as where I was then. Um, yeah, and I haven't played this game in years. Uh, I did really like the game. I had it on budget on the Hit Squad label. Oh, there's the uh, gas cylinders and the rocking bird. As you can see, I've just activated it. And now the time is ticking down in the top right corner, and we've got to move very quickly now. Yeah, long time since I played this game last. Um, I did enjoy it. Um, I think I enjoyed it more during the long play, actually. Um... It didn't score very highly at the time. I think it was sort of a 70% mark in Amstrad Action Magazine from memory. Um, so certainly didn't rank as high as other ocean movie licenses like Batman the movie, The Untouchables, etc. Although I think it stands alongside them. Um, Dartman uses his fists. He doesn't use a gun or a weapon. Um... And so there's no sort of like, you know, Batarang attack like Batman has. No gun like in the Untouchables. So it's beat em up time. Whether it works very well or not is debatable. I don't think it's brilliant, the combat. It's quite awkward. It's quite off putting and frustrating um, initially until you work out kind of a way to defeat them. Uh, 
and obviously the method I've shown you is to attack them, move the opposite direction quickly, then move into the attack again and repeat. So combat gets quite repetitive, but it is spiced up by having sort of platforming sections and other different types of gameplay in throughout the game, like the helicopter chase sequence we saw. So pretty good stuff. I think this should rank a little bit higher, uh, although I think the difficulty and the frustrating combat until you work out a method does initially put off a lot of people. It's perhaps not, perhaps doesn't have the instant appeal like Batman the movie had. But I kind of like the Darkman character more than uh, Batman, actually, if I'm honest, maybe. I don't know. Um, but the things, uh, just quickly, things to watch out for on this level are not necessarily the bad guys, but the other things that can damage you, like the uh, rising spikes there. Falling acid or water, whatever that is, probably acid. Um, spend too long touching them and it rapidly drains your energy that's where your energy goes so watch out for them yeah i've got a few bad guys here to take out um generally uh, you can't jump over the bad guys so don't try and do that otherwise you'll find yourself in a world of pain and hurt But yeah, um, perhaps not uh, remembered as Ocean's best film license, but they did get this out on a huge number of uh, platforms. Uh, I'll talk more on, uh, on them in a bit, actually, and the movie itself. I think we're about to reach the end of this level. There we go. We're uh, just escaped then. And we've got some different music here, actually. So whilst uh, Jonathan Dunn's compositions aren't perhaps up to his brilliant best, uh, there's quite a few of them, little jingles. I think there's about three or four of them used. And uh, I think this particular jingle um, is only used at this point in the game. Just a shame there's no music in game. I think the 128K version of Darkman could have handled it. Oh well. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, actually, let's talk about the other versions very, very quickly. Uh, the Specky version, very similar, but does have additional presentation. Like, before the levels, there's a typewriter type thing giving you, giving you a description of the level, whereas here... Right, within seconds to spare, Darkman grabs the rope beneath Durant's chopper. Now he hangs on for his life as the chopper swoops down to the busy freeway. The Amstrad version would just get plain text there. Same as the uh, Commodore 64 version, actually. Um, it's not a specky port. Uh, the graphics are quite different. Um, but it seems to share some code. Like, this helicopter section is pretty similar in how it moves and stuff like that. Now, so Darkman is dangling down behind the helicopter. More on the uh, other versions of the game in a bit. Um, so you're moving left and right, trying to avoid the traffic and the rocket launcher. Sorry, the grenade launcher that Durant is firing from, firing at you from the helicopter. Um, yeah, so keep yourself moving. Just keep tapping the direction there to keep you sort of bouncing off lorries and things like that. So I'm tapping the key there. This level is quite difficult. Um, it's kind of a test of memory, to be honest with you, where things appear. You may be very lucky and scrape through if you've never played it before. Uh, but uh, if you're playing this for the first time, worth taking a save point if you're on an emulator before this level starts. But it's actually uh, mercifully short, actually. I think this is the end of the level. So what happens here, like in the movie, Darkman jumps on the back of a lorry and ties the rope to the back of the lorry, which eventually drives through the tunnel and the helicopter can't move anywhere and smashes into the top of the tunnel and explodes. Durant is now terminated. And we get some new music from uh, Jonathan Dunn, actually. I think this is reused at the end of the game. And we'll let that play out just for a little bit so you can hear it. Now, the other versions, Commodore 64, again, 
similar, especially in the character graphics to the Amstrad version, um, but is really lacking in presentation compared to both the Amstrad and Specky versions. There is no music in between levels apart from on the title screen. Uh, but it does play faster and it does play smoother, uh, if I'm honest. Like the helicopter section we just saw looks much better on the Commodore version. Um, but the ending isn't as impressive. And plus the masks in the Commodore 64 version are all out of place. But here we are, Darkman was perfect final disguise to get close enough to Strat to free Julie his true love. So he's making a, a mask of Robert Durant, who we've just killed in the helicopter battle there. And again, the in-game he looks a little bit different to what we saw on the screen previous, which is a little confusing. But the mask is now complete, so that will give us um, a nice start in the final level of Darkman coming up. Level 6, his rage burning incandescent in his heart, Darkman pursues Strack with only two thoughts in his mind to free his love and kill his creator. Press fire to start. So this level takes um, place on a building site, building a uh, high rise tower, so it's high steel time. And that's what the main bad guy is waiting at the top. Uh, and he's captured your true love, Julie, who you need to rescue. No need to sort of knock down these guys because you're not going to be coming back to this area. You're just going to keep going up and up and up. So use the mask to your advantage to get as far into the game as you can. Just watch out for these falling acid drops bats and other things, they will drain your energy ridiculously quickly. What it really could have done with is Darkman sort of, if he gets hit, being temporarily invulnerable just for maybe a second or so. Oh, I lose the mask just as I'm back next to that guy with the bat behind me, damn it. But I managed to get through. The, only, I have, the other versions of Darkman uh, even appeared on the Game Boy. I think I played that briefly um, and it wasn't too bad. Um, I've played the NES version. Now the uh, the version on the Nintendo Entertainment System, Famicom, whatever you want to call it, um, is the presentation is utterly fantastic. I think it's probably the best one of the best presented games um, I've ever seen on the uh, Nintendo. Um, the graphics are absolutely stunning on it. Unfortunately, the game is an absolute pig to play. It is overly difficult and fussy with like your character movement and things like that. Damn, Unne unnecessarily taking some damage there from that bat. Now the uh, bad guys on this level, when you knock them down, don't stay down for long. So bear that in mind. Oh, a couple of rings to pick up there, which we'll get after knocking him down. They do nothing, the rings, they're just bonus points. Not sure why they've used rings here. Uh, maybe because before Peyton Westlake gets disfigured and becomes Dark Man, he proposes to Julie, um, but she hasn't accepted yet. Maybe they're kind of wedding rings or something I don't know um, now the movie itself um, I really wanted to do this long play for a very very long time there's actually quite a few uh, videos and even long plays of Darkman on the Amstrad on YouTube already so I've waited a long time um, I love this movie to bits uh, one of my favorites um, mostly because it's Sam Raimi uh, directing writing um, involved with all aspects of the movie. Um, Sam Raimi is one of my favourite directors of all time. He of course did the Evil Dead movies, Army of Darkness. Um, wow, took a lot of energy there. Uh, also, yeah, Spider-Man, um, Oz the Great and the Powerful and such like. Um, I love, but I love Sam Raimi's movies, his visual style with the camera and stuff. Now, Darkman itself 
um, was a box office success to an extent, I would say. Um, it had about, I think it's a 15 or 60 million dollar budget and made 32 million dollars in the US. Um, so, kind of doubled the budget. Um, what else did I read up? He made about a million dollars in the UK, which isn't very good. And did 48 million worldwide. Um, so, it did well, but it wasn't a massive smash. But Ocean really did commit to this game. All the versions, they put a lot of effort into it, even if the end game perhaps isn't fantastic. Um, what was interesting though was uh, Sam Raimi, who made uh, Dark Man, um, originally wanted the rights to Batman and wanted wanted to direct Batman, and was even in the frame for it at one point. Um, didn't get it. He wanted the rights for the Shadow, and didn't get that either. So made Dark Man, and I think um, I'm glad he did actually because I'm glad I've got both Dark, uh, Dark Man and Tim Burton's Batman to enjoy, and yeah, we we get two very good games on the Amstrad. But I do like this game a lot. Uh, a lot of people hate this game, but I really, I, I actually quite enjoy it. It's not the most enjoyable game in the world, but I do appreciate that it's gone the extra effort. One thing I just forgot to mention is when I got to that point previously there was a key to pick up. If you don't pick up the key you can't get past a doorway that's blocking you to the top of this level. But yeah, I do like this game. I, I appreciate when it got really good graphics, sound effects, everything. It got really nice small, smooth scrolling on the Amstrad for God's sakes. And the presentation is good, a good mix of levels. Um, I think it's good stuff. Not the best in the world. It doesn't beat Batman the movie, for example. For movie licenses, I buy Ocean, but it's damn good stuff. But uh, we're coming to the end of the game here. After this guy here, we'll be fighting the uh, Strack. And there's Julie, I love. Julie, love. Hang in there. There's Strack. Watch out, he fires a rivet gun, shooting nails and bolts at you. So just use the same technique and be prepared to duck. He can be quite a swine to defeat, so I'm getting quite low on energy there. Oh, very, very close. And there we go. Knocked him off. Ending sequence. And Darkman has rescued his love, Julie. End of game. <laughs> Quite a nice little ending sequence there. For those of you not familiar with the Amstrad and 8-bit machines, to have an ending like that is quite a rare thing. Normally you just get pretty much that, what you see now. A congratulations text message, if you're lucky. But it's nice that we've got a little bit of an ending there for all your effort. Ocean often did that. They often did some good endings to their games like Batman and Untouchables. But congratulations, Dotman Complete, you are a super player. So, review time. Um, I think I've covered most things uh, and not long ago. Um, I like this game, not the best in the world. I think I will give this a solid mm, 8 or 8.5 out of 10. You know what, sod it. I'm going to give this 8.5 out of 10. I do enjoy this. We've obviously much better games on the Amstrad, much better film licenses too. But he does rank up high in there. And uh, yeah, we will let the music play out a bit here. Another jingle there of music on the game over sequence. And then back to the title screen. Yeah, I'll let you hear this music again in full. Um, and then we'll end the video. So, um, I've got another Ocean uh, film license to do, which I completely forgot about, which is Total Recall. I don't know when I'll do that, but fairly soonish. There's some other videos I want to do. Um, but there we go. So that's Dark Man from Ocean Software in 1991. And I think it was a decent success for Ocean. It certainly wasn't the smash that Robocop was, or Batman. 
but they did pump a lot of effort into all the versions of Darkman. And I think a solid 8.5 out of 10 from me is fair. So, thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to be doing some more games I've been meaning to do long plays of for a while. Um, you've had quite a few long plays from me recently, so go and check them out on my channel. Uh, please uh, click the like button if you enjoyed this, whether you like the game or not. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I promise you guys, lots of really cool Amstrad videos coming up soon. Uh, a couple of big ones I'm working on. And obviously more long plays as well coming up. So, yeah, 8.5 out of 10 as final review score. I'm going to stick with that. Most people will probably give this a 7 or maybe a 6, but, well, well, my choice. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you soon. Goodbye. Bye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.